Hi and welcome to the 10th episode of Advanced Python. This episode will actually be the last of this series. Today we will be covering threading. Threading is a method of running multiple functions seemingly at the same time, but in reality something slightly different happens. Threads you create might seem to run simultaneously, but in reality they are running concurrently. Running concurrently means that a single core from your CPU or your processor will be constantly switching in between all of your threads. It will run a few lines from one thread, then switch over to the other thread, run a few lines from that thread, and it will keep going like that. In their basic form, threads might be slightly unpredictable and it might be difficult to guess which line is going to be used next, but there is a way to predict and manipulate the order at which threads are being run. The most common and useful method is through pauses in threads. For example, when a thread is waiting for user input or when using time.sleep commands. During a pause like that, a thread doesn't actually do anything, it's simply waiting in place, so that allows your CPU core to go over to different threads and perform actions over there while it's still waiting for the results from the first one. I will be showcasing how threading in Python works based on a simple example of a really basic console application which will be capable of doing multiple things seemingly at the same time. To start, I'm going to import two modules, import threading so that we can use our threading functions as well as import time so that we can have access to our time.sleep command. For this example we will need only two global variables, the first one being seconds which will be used to count the time for which the program has been running as well as a boolean value called stop threading which will be on default set to false and we can switch it to true so that we can stop all of our threads if we wish to. We will need a total of two functions which will be running on separate threads. The first one we are going to call run timer which will be responsible for counting time to our global seconds variable. To be able to edit that value, we have to specify global seconds, and then we're going to open a loop while not stop threads, inside of which we will do two things, the first one being time.sleep for one second, and the second one being adding plus one to our seconds variable. This way, when the function is running, as long as our stop threads variable is set to false, it will continue to wait a second and then add a second to our seconds variable and then it will keep that loop until we tell it to stop. Now I will define our second function, which will be our menu of sorts, where we can ask user for the input, where we can display information to the user, and similar things to that. I will call our function menu, it will also take no parameters, and because in this function I'm planning to change our stop threads variable, we have to specify global stop threads, so that we can edit that value from within our function. And we can start our main loop just like in the first function, while not stop threads, inside of which all of our operations in this function will take place. First off, we will display some informational stuff to the user, such as actions they can take. The first action will be enter A to see time, which will display our seconds variable. Our next option is to enter B to see the amount of running threads. And the last option, enter C to close the program. Now we will save user input to a variable called user input, and we will convert it to a string to avoid any issues. After we've already taken user input, we can start the defining our commands to first off see the time, then see the amount of running threads, and the third option to close the program. We can do so by adding our first if statement. If user input is equal to string of a, we will print the seconds variable and then continue so that we go back to the start of our loop without executing everything below. The second if statement, if user input is equal to b, we will print threading dot active count with brackets at the end which is a method that displays you the amount of currently running threads. Then we can continue just like in our first option and only one option left if user input equals C, we're supposed to close the program and to do so we will be required to close all the running threads. So we have to edit our stop threads variable to be true. And then we can continue. I'm just going to add one more thing after our options which will be a simple print statement to display user input and it will only happen if the user input is not any of the three options because if it is any of those options the function will continue going back to the start of the function so it will not use our print statement. So now we actually created our functions and what we want to do is run them simultaneously or in this case concurrently so that we can use the functionality of both of them in our program. To do so we have to assign the function objects into new variables as 
thread objects. We will start by naming our first variable thread1 and assigning to it threading.thread, which is how you create thread objects. And in the brackets, we have to define the target of our thread. So our target equals the name of the function which we want to run. Our first function is called runtimer. And because we want to pass on the function object and not the function results, we're not going to include a bracket after the name of our function. We can also define our second thread, thread2 equals threading dot thread target equals. Now we have two variables which are storing two separate thread objects, which we can use as we please. The first thing we do is actually start those threads so that they can continue to execute. We can do so by typing thread1 dot start with brackets, as well as thread2 dot start. And as soon as those commands are run, our threads start executing and we can actually test that by running our program now and as you can see we get our menu which displays all of our options and using that menu we can actually check if our runtimer function is running at the same time because we included the a option to see the time so we can actually display that variable if i type in a as you can see it prints 31 because the program was running for 31 seconds and if i press it again you can see now it was 40 seconds that is because our runtimer is constantly running while our menu function is waiting for user input just like a explained in the beginning, the core of your processor will leave your menu thread and go to the other thread while it's waiting for something. In this case, it's waiting for user input so other threads can continue to be executed. But our other thread also includes the time.sleep function, which constantly locks it in place for one second, which allows your CPU to go back to other threads and execute those instead. So even though it looks like those threads are running simultaneously, they are actually running concurrently with your CPU constantly switching from one to the other until it finishes executing all of them. We can also see the amount of threads we're running by typing in B, and as you can see, we're running three threads. But why are we running three threads since we only created two threads? Well, that is actually because when you're starting your program, even if you didn't do anything yet, that's already a single thread. Your program itself is the first thread of your application. And if you're adding more threads to that, then you're going to have more than one thread. In our case, it's three threads because we have the main thread, we have the menu thread, and we have the runtimer thread. And we can also type C to exit our program. As you can see, process finished with exit code zero. We can actually confirm that our main program is the third thread by typing in some commands after we start our first two threads so that you can see the commands after that keep executing anyway, even though we're inside of our two threads. If I would simply use the print command to let's say I'm still running and then run the program, you can notice that we see our menu given to us, but after that we still see I'm still running. And even though so a command from outside our threads was just printed out, we can still use our menu with all of its functionality. So what I will do now is I will create a while loop while seconds is under 10 and not stop threads has. Doing so will keep our main thread stuck in this while loop until 10 seconds has passed or until we have stopped all of our threads. After which, if seconds over or equals to 10, we will print the program was running for 10 seconds. I'm using an if statement here because in case we stop threads, we don't want this message to be printed out because it wasn't necessarily 10 seconds that has passed. And if I run my program now, we can see that our menu is displayed and if we just wait for a bit, we're going to see our message which says the program was running for 10 seconds and we can still use our menu to see time or to close the program. The next thing I want to talk about is actually how do you join threads or how do you wait until a thread is finished before continuing to execute code. You can do so by using the dot join command from your thread object which I will demonstrate over here by typing in thread1 join as well as thread2 dot join and what this essentially means is that when our main thread gets to this line it's never going to continue unless that thread is finished executing and then after that thread finishes executing and then it gets to the second line where it's again locked in place until the second function also finishes executing. We can prove that point by simply executing a print statement after our join methods all threads are finished. So that print statement should only be executed after all of our threads close. We can start it and then we can wait around in our menu until 10 seconds has passed because that's the point where our program goes past the while loop. And as you can see, the program was running for 10 seconds. However, our print statement here, all threads are finished, is not being executed because our main thread is now stuck on thread1.join and it's waiting for it to finish executing. We can close it by using our C to close the program. And as 
as you can see, it continues on to say all threads are finished. So this is how you would force your program to wait until a thread is finished. And one last thing I want to show you is actually how do you pass on any parameters to functions when you're assigning them as a thread object. You can do so over here next to our target simply by adding a comma and then specifying args equals and then brackets because it has to be passed on as a tuple and over here is where you put your parameters. So let's say I would have a parameter of 10 which I want to pass on. I would input 10 but after it I would have to input a comma because if you only input a single value it's not going to be passed on as a tuple. And if you have more values you simply type in more values after the comma and you add more commas. And that would be it for today. See ya!